I was born in 1940, right at the start of World War II, when the Germans invaded Holland or the Netherlands. And so we were constantly, throughout the whole war, we were on, uh, I don't know how to say this, but on high alert and fearful of all the things that were going on. We were overrun by the German army. Uh, bombs were falling in our city. <laughs> you know, uh, we were bombed, you know, from the American and English, and you were bombed a little bit earlier from the Germans. And the but, English. Yeah. And the Americans. Yes. Yeah. They were yeah. bombing all over. Yeah. Later we found out that there was some political problem with the propaganda uh, a radio station which was moved from Frankfurt, which was bombed every night. We saw the planes coming over the houses and we were in the basement waiting. We knew we wouldn't be bombed, there's nothing there to get. It's just bathhouses. But we found out that a radio station from Berlin or from Frankfurt was moved into one of our hotels. Yeah. And somebody in England said, throw a few bombs down there to quiet them down. Whenever I see a searchlight, you know, that yeah, yeah. will advertise something, a car lot opening or whatever, it I transports me right back to Amsterdam. I have, I have that on the 4th of July because we did not know fireworks. We had been seeing the real fireworks yeah. and we were wondering when the Americans on the 4th of July were celebrating um, and shooting and, and bombs going off. I remember that as a boy, what the hell is going on? Yeah, yeah. After the war, we uh, struggled as a country to rebuild. Uh, my father, he decided that we were going to go to Australia, not America. So he went to the Australian embassy and said, or asked if there was any way that we could go to Australia. And the uh, embassy told us that we were too late for that year, which was 1956. The quota was filled, so he said, all right, we're going to the United States of America. And of course he did this with full consent of my mother, not. <laughs> she had a hard time with that. And basically the same things that brought me to America probably brought you to America. I had been through the war. Our house was bombed. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I saw Germany coming up after the war and I grew up and went to college in the middle of all the rubble. And I was thinking, what am I doing here? Once I had my uh, degrees in engineering, I said, hey, I want to try out America. Is it really that nice? <clears throat> we did this, we liked it, became Americans, and this is how I ended up here. On the Christmas night in 2014, seven years ago, I fell. And I, I didn't fall badly, but I broke my neck. Well, that's badly. Once I got better, I was thinking, what will happen to me if I fall down and cannot get up living in an apartment house? And I heard advertising about Summit Vista. And that fell purposely. I mean, it was exactly what I wanted. My wife used to drive back and forth on 6200 South here. All there was just a sign that said Summit Vista. Paula went to find out what Summit Vista was all about. At first, I just went along with it, you know. And I'll tell you, I have not been sorry since. What they promised, we were talking amongst each other. Can that be true? And uh, we gambled and we won. I have not ever regretted making the decision to move. Right now, I can't see my life any other way. I enjoy the gym and, and certainly the pool. I go swimming three times a week. We actually have a good time every Saturday night. We meet each other and I bring a pizza or a tub of fried chicken or whatever. No, there's no question 
that, uh, you know, having found you with so much similar background, it is easy, we can get along very well, we can talk. The fact that we are from different countries made no difference. Since coming here, I've made so many friends. And here I am, having a bromance with you. <laughs> okay.